Okay, so this is the new 14 inch MacBook Pro. And you've probably heard a lot of great things and how powerful and performant these new M1 chips really are. Especially around the M1 Max paired with 32 gigs of RAM. But what about the base model? How's the M1 Pro with just 16 gigs of RAM hold up? So in this video, I'll be taking a look at how this base model spec not only is more than capable of the day-to-day -day and life admin tasks, but can also handle quite some strenuous tasks as well. Okay, so let's dive right into the performance. You've probably seen a lot of videos about how performant and fast exporting videos in the Final Cut Pro with these new M1 Max. And I'm gonna to lie to you, it's gonna be a bit similar here, but I'd like to spice things up a bit. So rather than just exporting a video, I want to create an environment where multiple things were happening at the same time, just to see if one, the M1 Pro will handle it and struggle, and two, if the fans will kick off. So I had Chrome with 30 tabs open. I had Safari and Firefox open as well, because why not? Then I started transferring some large files from one folder to another. I also started to empty recycling bin, which had several gigs of data. And I thought, why not try and install some software as well? I then started to kick off an export of a 4K video in Final Cut Pro, because every YouTuber has to do this, right? And to top it all off, I did a screen recording on the Mac. And I have to say the MacBook handled it really well. It never really froze, it was always responsive. I can flip between all the various apps. I didn't see the dreaded color spinning wheel for too long. I even struggled to keep up with the Mac whilst trying to kick off all those tasks simultaneously because it was good at keeping up. And it did it with little or no drama at all, no fans whatsoever. I did get the CPU above 70 degrees Celsius. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but aside from that, the machine was so quick to keep up, um, I'm overall really impressed. Compare it to my 2018 MacBook Pro, which is, is here, you may not be able to see it. If I just export a video from Final Cut Pro, I can barely browse the web, let alone do anything else. The fans would just kick in. And I would usually have to just walk away till the export were done and do something else. Now I know it's not a fair comparison between the M1 chips, but this is really something and it's not even the fully spec'd out machine. So the second thing I want to share with you is what it's been like using this machine for software development. I won't go too much into detail, maybe I'll create a separate video for that. But what I did want to show you is a quick test of building an iOS app using a framework called React Native. And running it for the first time on the Intel, it took over 3 minutes and 30 seconds. The M1 Pro did it in just under 1 minute and 5 seconds. That is incredible. The M1 Pro did it in less than half the time. That's like two minutes saved of your life waiting for stuff like this to build and launch. Then I ran the test again because now that certain files are cached and this time round, the Intel did it in one minute and the M1 did it in just under 10 seconds, which is just mind blowing. These machines are really next level stuff. Now you've seen what the performance is like, let's talk a bit about the keyboard. I don't know about you if you had the same troubles as I did with the butterfly switches. A, they were difficult to type on. I think it was a lack of feedback from the keyboard. And B, they were prone to a few issues. I'm so glad that Apple has brought back the traditional keyboard. With all this testing, I did get a real feel of what the keyboard is like, and it's such a joy to type on. I do have an external keyboard, which I use, and switched to this, it's actually quite nice. And I don't make as many typos compared to my 15-inch MacBook Pro. The new keyboard, however, has a really nice travel, gives you great feedback knowing you are hitting the keys, and the whole layout, including the non-existent touch bar is fantastic. I also kind of like the blackout area of the keyboard in general. That was not cool. The only downside is that the keys do attract fingerprints and a bit of grease, but hey, I'm just happy that Apple have put back a decent keyboard, and I hope they're a bit more robust. And now onto the screen. It is something I did not expect at all. The new liquid retina display is so vivid and crisp. It reminds me of the time when Apple started introducing retina screens to the Mac and the phones. And once you've seen these kind of displays, it's really difficult to go back. Whether you're just browsing the web, typing emails or editing documents, the text display alone is so much sharper. And then when it comes to watching videos, especially in high resolution, it is really something. You have to see it for yourself. So if you get a chance, go to the Apple Store and check out the screens. And although this is a 14 inch, the bezels are a bit smaller, giving you just a little bit more screen space. And if you were to program on the 14 inch, I would definitely say it's doable. Setting the display, you can get up to what Apple says, 1800 by 1169. And multitasking side to side app is not super great, but again, it's doable. 
And if you find the screen a bit too small, but you like the portability factor, the 14 inch or the M1 Pro can support up to two monitors with 6K at 60 Hertz. If you want more screens, you have to upgrade to the M1 Max. And then you'll get three displays with 6K and one display at 4K. Now, when I was watching a few videos to test out the screen, I got a chance to listen to the speakers. And now that Apple have added six speakers to the 14 inch as well as the 16 inch versions, they sound really great. And watching a few movies, the sound is really nice and punchy. Sound effects like explosions, cars, helicopter propelled noises, you can really hear the effects and tones come to life. And it's not just a movie, listening to music is great as well. Now I haven't had this machine for too long. I haven't had a chance to test the battery life and a few other things. I may do that in another video. But one thing worth mentioning is that if you think of upgrading to one of these, just know that bootcamp is no longer supported. So if you have a Mac with dual boot into Windows, you're probably gonna to need to use some virtualization software like VMware or Parallels. I've used both in the past. Both are great and no sponsorship here, just a suggestion. There's probably a lot more things I wanna test out, but so far I'm blown away by the performance, just how fast the SSD is, the screen, the speakers, the fact that I'm yet to hear the fan noise, and I'm pretty pleased and impressed with the 14 inch base model so far. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you on the next video.